In this Blender tutorial, we will be creating these procedural tie-dye paint splatter materials. And I'm going to show you how to create three different variations of these materials. Now, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel and purchase the tutorial files, then you can get those on my Gumroad and my Patreon. Links are in the description. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can check out my blender procedural material tutorial playlist all the links are in the description and then real quick before we start i want to thank sketchfab for sponsoring this video upload and preview your own 3d models on sketchfab my favorite feature of sketchfab is that you can preview 3d models online in your browser you can also purchase models and assets from sketchfab's model store you can use the model inspector to preview the wireframe mat cap textures and more before you purchase you can also apply to sell your own 3d models check out sketchfab with the link below. Now real quick, let me just show you what I have in the 3D space. So I just added three spheres and I shaded them smooth. And then also I added this plane right here and I gave it a subsurf modifier so that it is round. And then I just added an emission material on it so that we have a nice bright light shining on our spheres. And then also right over here on the world, I added in this machine shop 021k HDR. This is from polyhaven.com. So it's a free HDRI. And if you'd like to download it, I'll have the link in the description. So I just added this into the world to help us get some nice realistic lighting. And then also, if you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, just click right up here on Edit and then go to the Preferences. And then just click on the Add-ons tab and you can start to type in Node over here on the search and you can just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. I'll show you how to use it in the video. So right here in Blender's Shader Nodes Editor, I'm just going to click on New to add a new material and I can just call this tie dye one. So to create this first variation, I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Now let's just drop the noise texture right down here. And then also with this selected, I can press control T that's using the node wrangler feature and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I'm just going to take the object and plug that into the vector on the noise texture. And so we don't need the mapping. So I can just press X to delete it. And then also using the other node wrangler feature, I can hold down the control and shift key and click on nodes to preview them. So I'm going to turn the detail right here all the way up to 16 and then I'll turn the roughness here to a 0.6. Now, if I control shift and click on this noise texture a couple of times, you can see that as well as it having factor data, it also has color data. And so the factor data is basically a black and white version of this color data. So I can actually take the color and put that into the base color. And then I can control shift and click on the principal. Now you can see that it's not very bright right now. It's kind of hard to see the colors. So to make it more bright, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a bright contrast node. So it's a brightness and contrast node. And I'll I'll drop it right in here between the noise texture and the principled. So I can now turn the bright value up to a 0.26. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'll also turn the contrast value up to a 8.9. And you can see now because we've turned up that contrast, it's really making it more contrasty. So you're clearly able to see those colors. Now it really depends on what you're using this for, but I think it would be cool just to add a little bit of bump. So I'm going to take the color and I'm going to put that color into the normal and then I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node so that we can convert this to bump data or normal data. So I'll plug the bump node right in here. So the color needs to go into the height on the bump and then that can go into the normal. Now it does look pretty strong right now and if you like this, you could leave it how it is, but I'm gonna turn the strength way down to a 0.1 so it's not very rough. If you zoom in, you can just see a little bit of roughness. And then I'm gonna turn the roughness down to like a 0.3 and you can see now it looks just a little bit shiny. And there we go, so that is the first variation. So this could be used on like a tie dye shirt, or if you wanted to make some sort of abstract painting, maybe a painting on the wall or something like that, then you could put this material on some paint canvas or maybe on like a piece of paper or something like that. So let's now move over to our second sphere and we're going to create the second variation, which is going to have more swirls. So I'm going to click on this sphere right here and I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to add the tie dye one material. Now I want to duplicate it so it's a separate material. So I'll click on this button right here and that will make it a separate material, but keep the same data. So I can now rename it to tie-dye two. Now for this one, I'm gonna change the scale to two. 
so that it's a bit smaller, and then I'll also turn the distortion up to one. So that distortion value is adding a lot more swirls in the texture. And you could turn it up even more if you want to, but I do think that looks a little bit weird, so I just like to turn it to one. And then of course you can change the scale if you want to be smaller and more detailed. And also you can turn up the roughness value if you want there to be a lot more roughness. So you can see when I turn that up, it looks a lot more detailed, or if I turn the roughness down, you can see now there's not quite as much detail on the edges there. I like a value of 0.6. All right, that is the second one. So let's jump over to our third sphere. I'm going to click on the third sphere. And then right here, I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to add the tie dye one again. And then again, I want to duplicate this material. So I'm going to click on this button right here to duplicate the material. And I can just rename this material to tie dye three. Now for this material, I'll change the scale to four just so that it's a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to change the brightness value. So I'm going to make this brightness value a negative 0.5. And when I do that, you can see that now all the white values are now dark. And then I want to add a little bit more roughness, so I'll turn this roughness value to 0.7. And if you zoom in here, you now you can see there's a bunch more detail in there. All right, so the materials are finished. Now, one other way that you can customize these materials, if you want to change the colors of them, is you can press Shift A and you can search for a hue saturation node. And I'm just going to drop the hue saturation node after the bright contrast. So now, if you change the hue, it's going to change the colors. So you can see if I turn the hue all the way up to one, now it's just using like a light blue, a pink, and a yellow, or I can just keep on changing the hue, and that does look really cool. I think that looks pretty cool. Or I could even turn it to a negative value, like a negative one. Let's try a negative five. That looks pretty cool as well. And of course, you can change the brightness value and the contrast value, and that's going to make it look different as well. So you can see really with just these two nodes, you can really change the look of your paint splatter or your tie dye material. I'll just add a hue saturation value to the second one as well. And let's play around with this. So I'll change the hue. You can see it totally looks different. I could also play around with the saturation if I want it to be a lot more stronger, or if I want the colors to be more faded, I could turn the saturation down and then the value is going to control the brightness. So if I wanted to turn the brightness down on this, I could turn the value down. So I'll give this a render now and we can take a look at the final materials. And there we have it. So there are the finished materials. So if you're wanting to create some sort of tie dye or abstract paint splatter material, then these materials are really quick and easy to make and they have a great result. So thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope the tutorial was helpful. And a great way to help support this channel is by purchasing the tutorial files on my Gumroad and Patreon. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase my packs of Blender procedural materials. But thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.